Assalamu alaikum student, I am Asan and you are watching Learning Corner online. Today my lecture is about the auxiliaries. Well, there are two types of auxiliaries, one is model auxiliary and the other is primary auxiliary. But today I am going to discuss the primary auxiliary. Okay, primary auxiliaries are the well studied group of words from earlier linguistic studies to the present day. These auxiliaries are small numbers of item which are highly distinctive both semantically and syntactically. These auxiliaries are different from the main lexical verbs in syntactic behavior. Okay, we have divided these auxiliaries into different groups or categories like for example we have progressive B. Progressive B is comprised of is, are, am, was and were. The use of auxiliary is conjugated according to the subject. The use of auxiliary is conjugated according to the subject. Like for example, if the subject is singular, then we will use is. And if the subject is plural, then in that case, we prefer are. Understand? Okay, now, if, if, if an action is going on in a present time, then present progressive be is used. Like he is eating the meal. They are offering their prayers. If an action was in progress but in the past, then in that case we use was and were and the use of was and were is conjugated according to the subject. Like for example, he was listening to the music. They were playing cricket. Now move on toward the passive B. Just like the progressive B, passive B is also comprised of is, are, am, was, were. But here it is used in passive construction, passive construction. For example, the apple was eaten, the work was done. Okay, so this is the only difference between the progressive B and the passive B. One is used in active sentences and the other is used in passive construction. Then we have perfectios. Okay. Perfectios include have, has and had. Have and has are used when an action happened in the past but has its relevance in the present. Like for example, someone has broken the window, someone has broken the chair. Now the action occurred in the past but it has its relevance in the present like for example I need that chair but someone has broken it. So the effect of work exists in the present in that case we use perfectios. In perfectios we have had, had is used when something had happened before something else. Understand in that case we use had. Okay then we have dummy do. It is another auxiliary. Okay. It is used for emphasis. When we want to emphasize something, then in that case, this auxiliary is used. Okay. Also, if we want to make negative of uh, present simple tense, so we use do as a helping verb. Also, if we want to make the interrogatives of present simple thing, in that case we also use do. Okay, now let us move on toward the nice property. Nice property was identified by Rudy Huddleston in 1976. It is an acronym of negation, inversion and emphasis. Well, negation, let us start from negation. 
according to the nice property if we want to make if we want to change a statement from positive to the negative well there we need the the help of a helping verb we can change a sentence from positive to negative by placement of negative negation particle not like for example he does not go understand so i change the statement from he goes to he does not go by the placement of negation but remember the placement of negation is not possible with the man verb understand it is not possible for us to say uh, he goes not understand the sentence will be syntactically incorrect so definitely we need helping verb we need auxiliary if we want to change a sentence from positive to negative the second property of uh, auxiliary is inversion according to the nice property inversion okay in in case of inversion auxiliary inverts with the subject the auxiliary inverts with the subject mean subject is replaced by the auxiliary understand so we replace a subject with the auxiliary if we want to make interrogative sentence like for example is he going is he going understand so i invert auxiliary with the subject and you can see it in this example okay the next property the next uh, is code of auxiliary the next property of auxiliary is uh, code in case of code verb phrase is effectively picked up a verb phrase is effectively picked up to avoid the repetition and this can be achieved by using an auxiliary like for example sara wears nice dress sadia does too understand so definitely if we want to avoid the repetition of a verbal phrase we can do it by using auxiliary okay the last one emphasis auxiliaries are also used for emphatic affirmation of a doubtful statement and for emphatic affirmation keep it in your mind understand so if we want to emphasize we can use auxiliary so auxiliary is also used for the purpose of emphasis like for example look at this example i like cheese now look at the second example i do like cheese the difference is quite visible in second sentence you can clearly see the emphasis emphasis is bad in the second sentence in the second example and it's all because of the auxiliary so we use auxiliary for the purpose of emphasis that's all for today thank you and stay blessed